Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here, I got another Master Duel video for you. Uh, we are rounding out our final deck profile for Season 32 with Vanquish Soul, which I thought I'd played this sooner in the season, but then I realized, like, no, I definitely didn't play it before the selection pack, and I only played a handful of stuff before that. So, uh, yeah, definitely wanted to squeeze this one in. I'm kind of surprised I didn't earlier, because I think if I had to rank my favorite decks in Master Duel right now, this would probably make the top five. I really, really like Vanquish Soul. Um, I think one of the coolest things about this deck in particular uh, is that unlike a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh decks, I think this one is pretty like heads up in what it does if you read the cards. And what I mean by that is like um, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, as much as I love it, it's really hard to read individual cards in a deck or within an archetype and necessarily get a, a feel for how it plays, right? Especially as time goes on and a lot of archetypes are incorporating like legacy support or, you know, a random card that came out in 2010 as like an centric part of their combo line. So a lot of times when a new deck comes out, you know, our cards get spoiled. I'll read through them all and kind of be like, okay, I see how these work together and what you could maybe do with that. And okay, I don't know if that's good or not, but it seems okay. And then I'll watch the combo, you know, the combo line later on YouTube or something and be like, okay, Okay, no, this deck is just broken, right? But uh, I don't think Vanquish Soul is like that. I think that if you read the, the individual Vanquish Soul cards, it actually does give a pretty good idea of how the archetype plays out. And a lot of reason for that is because, unlike a lot of modern Yu-Gi-Oh decks, Vanquish Soul is more of a slow control deck that wants the game to go on longer, right? To me, that's always been the definition of a control deck, is a deck where the longer the game goes on, the higher your win rate is because you're able to, uh, you know, intermittently stop your opponent with your disruption, uh, preventing their combos, and then kind of peeling away their card advantage uh, by picking apart their board piece by piece, right? As opposed to, you know, a lot of combo decks that want to do, that want to go first. I mean, this deck wants to go first too, but that want to go first, do their big turn one combo, and then have the opponent either concede to that on turn two or lose all their stuff trying to play into it, and then you kill them on the follow-up turn three right so so yeah with the uh the vanquish soul i mean we do have a line with like the raisin for example uh that's kind of our one card combo line but again better than ending on a bunch of negates we're just kicking up our resource loop and getting that started uh and also searching up the snow devil uh one thing i will say about vanquish soul is that in a metal like this it is a little bit weaker which i think is why it kind of fell off uh as far as like its win rate goes like on untapped it used to be Pretty consistently the highest win rate deck even if it wasn't the most popular but i think a lot of the reason that we're not seeing that as much anymore is because one of the main uh interactions for the deck snow devil that you want to end on does have a powerful effect of destroying all monsters on the field however in a meta where fire king and Ubel are two of the best things you can do uh it's pretty easy to see why destroying all of your opponent's monsters might not necessarily be the best thing for you uh, of course there is also the dust devil which can turn everything face down but again, that doesn't necessarily stop everything in this meta. For example, in Yubel, they can still use their face down monsters to make Phantom of Yubel, and Tyrwens can still fuse with them because you can always fuse with face down monsters. It's the one extra X summoning mechanic that, that works like that for some reason. So, um, let's see. I mean, as far as the main deck goes here, it's pretty standard, honestly, um, which is how I like to build a lot of my decks. But uh, one thing that I am playing here that I haven't in the past is Bistial Magnum Hut. <clears throat> and it might look a little bit weird to play the Magnum Hut by itself without the Druid Swarm, but, or like another Bistial Monster. But we do have a Dragon to search that's going to be Caesar Valius, and you do want access to Caesar Valius during your opponent's turn. In fact, I think the turn one line, the best thing that you can do is try to set up not only a Snow Devil, but of course one of each Dark, Earth, and Fire. The Raisin will be your Fire uh, most of the time if you do that combo line. Uh, and then Borger and Valius make for pretty good Earth and Dark, respectively. So the more searches you can get for that turn uh, to make sure you have all your attributes and all of your, you know, Disrupt slash Bounce cards, uh, the better it'll be for you. So I'm, I liked the Magnum Hut. I think I'm going to keep playing it moving forward. Uh, for the extra deck, you know, this deck only has one extra deck monster, our Link one, so a lot of the extra deck you get to play is, like, generic stuff. Uh, granted, you won't end up needing a lot of it most of the time. For example, I'm on, like, Battle and Boxer King Dempsey. I almost called this Fire King Dempsey. Uh, Battle and Boxer King Dempsey uh, as a potential way to search out the, the Raisin, but you definitely don't need to be. Um, this is a very, very niche way of doing so, and this card has never come up for me. Um, I have had people ask why Borbo and Chalcanine, but no Dryden. 
Uh, that's because we're not using these to go into a Dryden line. Uh, the idea here is that you can use two of your level fours to go into Chalcanine, then overlay Borbo on top of that, attack directly, and then you'll have a four material Zeus. So that's why we have those uh, seemingly two random Zodiac monsters, right? Baguska is here in case we need to stall uh, with the rank 4 option. Typhoon's good and a lot of stuff with generic uh, extra decks, kind of like this one. Um, we just have a bunch of generic Link monsters that may or may not come up. Nightmare Phoenix, Hita and Dark, SP of course, then Goddess, and then Baron de Fleur. Uh, we have because we are on the Castier of Fenrir. So, um, you know, we are playing both Ash Blossom and Ghost Bell. So it's not that hard for that to come up some of the time. All right. Um, let's see, anything else I want to go over with this list? So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we have, like I said, a lot of the standard stuff here. Ghost Spell is a hand trap that we are playing that we don't normally, but uh, that's because it's Earth, and, you know, the more attributes we can have for our Vanquish Soul stuff, the better. Also, uh, I'm gonna, I might try doing this moving forward. Somebody suggested this in the comments of a recent YouTube video of, like, Clicking through all the cards like I usually do, but not necessarily like saying each of their names, and I think I kind of like that as a way to uh, sort of round out the, the the discussion point. So I might also like start moving the deck discussion after the games. I'm going to start playing around, I think, with the the video format, but I'll make more I'll make more announcements about that when that becomes more concrete. I just I got a lot of ideas thrown in my head, you know, so. Um, I think maybe starting next season. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to it, but yeah, like I said, this is definitely one of my favorite control decks, and I'm very eager to show off some of these replays that we got going in here. Uh, I think we have three this time? Yeah, three. So, all right, there is our list. Let's go ahead and start watching those games. All right, going into our first rating duel here. Uh, let's go ahead and see what this opponent's going to end up being on. Got a, quite a few back and forth games, I think, for this one, which is to be expected from a control deck. So, looks like we're taking the second turn, and we actually have a pretty solid going second hand. This also would have been a fine going first hand, of course, as well. Uh, opponents can lead with the cast here of Fenrir, adding the Unicorn. That tells me, I don't know, it's probably going to be either cast Shiro or Tier Laments, and it does end up being Tier Lament here. Um, with Fenrir add Unicorn, something like that, you can never be too sure, right? Uh, Unicorn's search is more of a giveaway because it's, it's, um,. If it's, uh, what's it called? The, the Theosis, then of course it's cash, but if it's birth, it's probably a package. So, they did not end up really milling anything here, if we take a look at their mills from their turn. Uh, the Tear Cash milled, what, two Rev Synchro on a Super Poly? The Tear with Scream milled, um, Meta Noise, Crime, and Destrudo, which are actually not bad cards to mill, it's just kind of unfortunate for my opponent that Crime and Meta Noise don't do anything because there's no... Uh, of course, tier cards in Banish or Graveyard, and then Destrudo can't do anything because they don't have a level 4 lower monster, so... Or a level 7, or... Blah! 6! That number. <laughs> level 6 or lower, so... Uh, the second reason is actually not that bad because we are able to use the Stake Your Soul to pull out the Zhao Long and then get a search off of it, revealing both the raisins. Now I can Normal Summon the Raisin, adding Caesar Valius, and I also have a Fire and a Dark, but I'm not going to get to use them, uh, the Raisin effect, rather, because my opponent is going to Super Poly here, unfortunately. Uh, we did, of course, and I don't think I pointed it out, but we did start by imperming Fenrir at the beginning of this turn. So, unfortunately for me, not much else I can do here. I'm going to have to set Call By and Pass. But it's going to Fenrir for yet another Unicorn. And I believe, if we take a look here, yep, so both cards in their hand should be Unicorns, right? Or no, no, they, they uh, what did they discard for Super Poly? Oh, they just card Ash Blossom. So yeah, both cards would be Unicorns then here. I believe, anyway. Alright, so I'm going to call by the Destrudo here as it's trying to summon out. I do not need to deal with the Barrel and Defleur. And if these indeed are both Unicorns, then what my opponent has access to here uh, is not going to be enough to stop me. So It is going to deal a lot of damage, this board, but I believe it leaves me at 14? Yeah, 1400 here, so... Uh, and this hand's actually looking pretty solid going into the opponent's turn here. And we actually ripped another Imperm, which was kind of an insane top deck and literally exactly what I needed. Just keeping this Fenrir offline. Now, there are going to be the Scream Mills here. I opted not to use the Ash Blossom. Might have been a little bit greedy, but my opponent, in fact, did not end up milling anything here. Um, the way I saw it, I was like, you know... If my opponent ends up milling a Fuser and going for Kikolos, I could just Ash the Kikolos search and then battle over the Kikolos, right? Um, but 
Yeah, I don't usually like to Ash Blossom mill or excavate effects because they're not guaranteed to hit gas, and if they whiff on the mills, then that's essentially like them, you know, having their effect negated, right? I am, however, going to Ash Blossom the Soliac Search because I do not want them to add a Havnus uh, to get more mills. As well as another body. I don't know, they're just not taking a chance here. Or if they even want to add a Rhino Heart for, you know, to make plays on their turn, I don't want that to happen either. So, by using Raisin, I can not only pop the Finra, but then special the Zhao Long. I'm going to special Valius by bouncing the Raisin to hand. Moving to battle phase, I get to battle over just the Tear Cash here. But you'll notice I did not crash into the Mud Dragon here, because, again, I know my opponent is stuck on Cash Share Unicorn and no other live cards, right? So... Um, what I'm doing here is I'm keeping them on only the Mud Dragon, so that way Cash Unicorn is not a top deck, and I'm forcing them to hard rip, like, their one Rhino Heart left in deck. One Rhino Heart because they milled two uh, without any tier cards in hand. I suppose they could also add, or rather top deck, Pearl of Rhino. Shiren might lead them to, actually would lead them to a mill six, which would probably be pretty good here, because they're down to the latter half of their deck, so... Uh, that said, that's only, what, 4 cards out of 20, so that's a 20% chance for them to rip something live here. I mean, of course, there might be other live plays, but not as many that I'm as scared of here. Alright, so with the Rock, I'm going to add the Zhao Long back to hand. Now I have two Fires that I can reveal. I'm going to reveal the Raisin and the Zhao Long. Opponent's going to Ash Blossom this search. That actually is completely fine, because, like I said before, uh, Dust Devil isn't super great against this deck, because it can still fuse with Face Down. Uh, Snow Devil, this is actually another deck that Snow Devil's not always that great against, because, of course, that'll just trigger stuff like Kinkalos and Fusers, right? Um, but they actually conceded right after the Ash Blossom ended up resolving. Um, and I think it's because they realize that I can just activate Zhao Long again during their draw phase and still get another search, and then I would still have access to both Borger and Valius there. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's a pretty good example of how um, you can kind of take control of the game. Even in a situation like our first turn, turn two of the duel, where we had to end on set call by pass and nothing else, we still knew what was in our opponent's hand and what they had access to, and by keeping track of that and taking notes accordingly, we're able to keep them off of live plays. So let's take a look at our next game here. Okay, this duel's a little bit shorter. I think this is me going first and kind of establishing our uh, control loop, if I had to guess, because it's only a couple of turns, this duel. But yep, so we're going to take the first turn here going against a 60-card deck, and this hand is pretty phenomenal here. I'm actually going to lead with the Rota for the Raisin. Um, not just to, like, bait out Ash Blossom, but also because having the extra fire in hand is not only not bad, but even needed in order to do the combo line in full with the Zhao Long, right? So, all right, after normally Raisin adding Zhao Long, I'm going to link off the Zhao Long for Rock. Uh, oh, and by the way, we special Zhao Long, of course, by revealing for the Raisin first effect. Now, after we add the Raisin back to hand with Rock, we have two fires, so we can reveal them both. I'm going to search Borger here, uh, because I already have the Snow Devil in hand. Um, if I did not have Snow Devil in hand, I would search it so I could set it here. But because I already have it, I can use my two searches for Borger and Valius, and then, as I discussed in the profile, that's going to ensure that we have the Fire, the Dark, and the Earth. So, uh, our opponent didn't end up having any hand traps here, but even if they did, we would have had Call by a Triple Attack, so... I would call this a pretty perfect turn one hand, honestly. Alright, draw phase. Again, we're going to use the Zhao Long after revealing both our raisins to add the Caesar Valius. Going into our opponent's turn here. They're going to lead with Imseti, Glory of Horus, pitching the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation. Um, they conceded right after that. I really thought this duel went on a little bit longer. <laughs> but I guess not. Um, that's kind of wild that they conceded because... I don't even know, because it's a rating duel, I can't see their list. I don't even know what exact deck they're on, but I can sure tell you how they could have made plays just based off what we saw, right? So I call by Imseti, and that, of course, negates that effect. But they still have the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, which will add, let's assume that we only know they're on the Horus package, could still add the Field Spell, as well as the uh, Crystal Beast monster, right? Now, from there, you could still use the field spell to add another horse monster, uh, which would count as King Sark. So if you have another way to get horse monsters into the graveyard from there, you could still make those kinds of plays. That is kind of the hard part, not having King Sark. But I'm guessing their other four cards had to be super dead for them to concede that quickly. 
Um, especially in the fact, based on the fact we saw Rainbow Bridge of Salvation. Never mind that they could have searched probably, I don't know. Again, I don't know what's in their deck for sure, but you're telling me they couldn't get like Pearl of Rhino. If it's a pile deck, they couldn't get like Nightmare Throne or uh, Wait Soth or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we have one more game we're going to take a look at here. Let's finish off with that one. All right, don't worry. This duel is going to be definitely longer than that last one was. It's so back and forth, and sometimes it can be a little bit hard getting uh, good replays, but I think I might kind of switch to doing more live duels for these types of videos uh, in the near future, so that might help alleviate that problem a little bit. Anyway, going to leave my normal summoning the Raisin here. This hand's okay. I mean, Raisin and Double Mad Love is a little bit awkward, but at least we do have another Fire Bloss Fire Blossom. Fire Monster in the form of Ash Blossom, so... Uh, same combo line as the last turn one. We're going to normal the Raisin, add Jowlong, reveal one Fire Monster for the first effect of Raisin, special Jowlong, link off Raisin for the Rock, and then we can add Raisin back to hand. Uh, as you can see, I searched the Snow Devil here. Uh, again, want to do that to make sure that's set up, and then now I can reveal Ash Blossom and Raisin yet again to add a Caesar Valius, because again, I have dark attribute monsters in the form of Mad Love. So, oh yeah, this game's against Sky Striker. That's right. Let's say Control Mirror Match. Okay, so they go upstart, foolish, goods, the metal foes fusion, another upstart. Now they have more than enough cards for the mobilize engage. I'm gonna fire off the Ash Blossom here, which does resolve, but you know, it's Sky Striker, so they're definitely gonna be able to wheel that back to their hand. Uh, triple Attack ends up being their next card to look at my hand. Now, here, I'm gonna chain the Maxi, as well as Caesar Valius bouncing Zhao Long, and then I'm also gonna chain Rock to summon out the Raise into my hand. And basically, I'm doing this to make my opponent's triple attack for the hand rip as bad as possible. Uh, it's going to ruin my Snow Devil, which is unfortunate. But what I can do here is basically make it so their options for the hand rip are going to be two Mad Love and Zhao Long, and that's it. They'll, of course, back to Zhao Long because that's going to be the only one of, but that's fine with me. Um, until they actually chain the Widow Anchor on the rock, that's going to force me to chain the Snow Devil. Uh, I'm only going to reveal two, not three, though, because I don't want to destroy all monsters on the field, necessarily, uh, that will... Well, actually, you know, that's the thing, right? If I destroy all monsters on the field, then I'll get rid of the rock here, and then they'll be able to use Sky Striker spells, which are not able to right now. But, again, we make it so the triple attack is at least a little bit better for us. They're under Maxi, and now they can't take the Caesar Valius, which is what I wanted here. So we can also raise and search to add the Borger for at least a little bit more interaction. Um, now here they are going to use the Mecha Modules uh, in order to send off the Rock. So now they can use uh, Sky Striker spells again. Gonna get my draw in while I can. Let's say they got Normal Summon Ray linking off into the Kagari. Yeah, and now they can uh, Kagari to add back the Engage. As I said before, they were definitely going to be able to add that, add that back. All right, going for Engage here for the Search and Draw, adding Widow Anchor. Again, they are still under Maxi, which is pretty good for us here. Ah, now here I misplayed. It's not necessarily obvious to tell, but I should have activated Valius when they move to Battle Phase. Because I believe I did actually have all three attributes, so I could have potentially popped Kagari or even Mecha Modules itself. Because this is any card, right? Yeah, one other card. Or I could have also just revealed Fenrir and made it unaffected. Granted, if I did that, they still could have taken the Borger, but then they wouldn't have at least gone to battle over here. But basically, the reason I had to do it preemptively is because they activated the first effect of Mecha Modules. So now I cannot respond to their spell cards for the rest of the turn. So... That was where the misplay was. I, I just wasn't even really thinking about the fact they had done that, so um, I should have been more mindful regarding that. Granted, it isn't really the damage here. Um, again, Sky Striker is another control deck, so as long as they're able to get a good foothold in the game, then they will be able to win. Now, they're going to get to use them. I definitely should have popped Mecha Modules here. Yeah, look at this. I get to set multiple cards now. Including a Widow Anchor that can be used on my turn. That was such a bad misplay on my part. It really was. Uh, we do rip the Called By here, which we can use against the Maxi, but... Hmm, we're gonna have to see how this turn plays out. I mean, we have a lot of stuff in hand that we can use, so there is that. Alright, so of course we're gonna leave with Special Summon Fenrir. Uh, activate the Fenrir effect to add the Rice Heart. 
Now I can normal summon Raisin. Raisin F, they're going to activate the Widow Anchor here. And yeah, I mean... I think this is where... Yeah, I mean, again, if we had popped the Mecha Modules, we wouldn't have to deal with that. Uh, I can use Fenrir to banish the face down, and then Bell to stop the Ray from coming back, but they still have an Engage that's going to be able to search and draw for their turn. Now, the thing is, too, if we had had Valius or Borger in hand, we could have also bounced the Raisin when it was targeted by Widow Anchor, uh, which would have allowed us to have more bodies on the board and also be able to special summon Zhao Long and then in turn get more searches. We could have searched for a Dust Devil, potentially. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different there's so many different ways we could have played this game. I mean, that's the thing about Control Mirrors, right? Because games are going to go on longer, and not just Control Mirrors, but playing Control Decks in general. Because the duels go on longer, your individual decisions end up mattering a lot more. And, you know, a lot of times in Combo Decks, you can make certain misplays that and be like, oh, that's really fine because... You know, if you burn an extra copy of a card or if you don't set up a search properly, it's like, ah, eh, that's fine because if my combo goes off, I'll just win anyway, right? But for a control deck, you don't have that luxury. You need to feed that resource loop in order to maintain that win. So that's definitely how I could have played better here. All right, that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Thanks, as always, for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and move now to our outro. Hey everybody, Hexlex here. Just want to give you a huge thanks for watching all the way to the very end of the video. Uh, believe it or not, that is actually one of the best ways that you can support the channel, is by watching the videos in their entirety. But there are many ways in which you can support the channel if you are so interested. Uh, the names that you're seeing on screen here, I gotta give an extra special thanks to, because these are people who have chosen to either become a member on YouTube, which if you're interested, you can do as well via the join button next to the subscribe button down there uh, or have signed up over on patreon and become members there link to that is going to be in the description below uh, without the support that is being offered by again all the people that you're seeing on screen right here um, I would not be able to take the time to dedicate to uploading daily YouTube videos so thank you thank you so very much but uh, there are also other ways you can support as well um, again link to the description below if you like my deck tracker that you'll see in a lot of my videos the untapped companion you can download that that for free and if you use my affiliate link down there uh, then that also goes a long way towards supporting the channel uh, that's again free so is subscribing here on YouTube that's also free and a huge way to support uh, you can also uh, check out twitch once again linked in the description below following and subscribing over there will not only support as well but also give you notifications of when I go live if you want to catch some of the live streams um, but really no matter how you choose to support uh, it all adds up and it all definitely means the world so thank you each and every one of you uh, for now this is Hexlex I'm gonna be signing out but more than that, I'm hoping that you have a fantastic day.